My name is Mark Yeoman and I work at the University of Brighton in the Centre of Biomedical and Health Science Research and I'm part of a larger group working on ageing. Now as we all know the population in Britain is ageing and lifespan, mean lifespan is increasing quite dramatically at a rate of probably five hours a day at the moment. And that's not a problem but what we don't want with an increase in lifespan is for people to be suffering during those later years with, with various um, types of morbidity. Um, and age is a major risk factor for, for very many diseases such as coronary heart disease, dementia and, and incontinence and as a consequence we believe that by studying the basic biology of ageing we may help older people live more healthily and also postpone the onset of these age-related diseases. So the specific aspect of, of ageing that we're interested in or that my group's interested in is how the nervous system ages. And if we look at the, the evidence that's out there at the moment, most people believe that there isn't really a, a serious loss of neurons with increasing age, the sort that would be associated with Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease. Um, but really that all that changes are the, are the connections between individual neurons, and it's those changes that lead to diseases such as dementia. And historically, snails, and there's a picture of a snail on the computer here, historically snails have, have been used for studying the ways in which nerve cells communicate with one another, and lots of the information that's been generated in snails has helped us understand how the mammalian brain works. So this is an image of the whole central nervous system of the snail. You can see it's a lovely orange colour. I'd just like to draw your attention to this part of the screen here, and these individual circles that you can see. Each one of these is a nerve cell um, that we can reproducibly identify from one animal to the next. And what that allows us to do is to be able to record the properties of, of connections between identified nerve cells across the lifespan of the animal and see how those connections change. Now one of the projects that we're involved with in this lab is trying to answer the question of why certain connections in the brain deteriorate with age whereas others are clearly maintained and using this model system we've identified this cell here which contains serotonin and that cell makes connections with two motor neurons that control feeding behaviour and one of those connections, the one that allows the mouth to open does not change with age, is unaffected by age, but the other connection that controls swallow uh, deteriorates with age. And this is kind of interesting to us because certainly old people can have problems swallowing and we may have a very simple model that would allow us to examine why this occurs. In order to um, try and figure out why these two connections in the nervous system change differentially with age, Lindsay Morgan, a colleague of mine in the lab, is, is carrying out some studies to, to try and work out what's changing. So Lindsay, why are you studying the feeding behaviour? Well, the way the animals feed gives us a really good insight into changes in their behaviour comparing young and old. So the feeding behaviour is actually closely linked to a number of neurons. Um, and as the animal ages and the connectivity in these neurons degenerates, we see changes in their feeding. They bite slower and they bite fewer times per minute. So it's a really good tool to use to distinguish between young and old snails. And what sort of techniques are you using to, to try and determine what's going on? Well, I'm actually looking at protein expression in the snails and we've identified a number of key proteins in the brain of the snail that are quite closely linked to human proteins that are important in diseases related to neurodegeneration. So things like Alzheimer's disease and Lewy body disease, things that have got dementia as a quite prolific pathology. And um, what's really interesting is, is these same cells that control feeding also have uh, a very, very important in, in allowing the animals to learn and remember simple tasks and, and Greg Scutt, another one of my colleagues who works with us, is, is working on learning a memory in snails and then looking at how age affects learning a memory. So Greg, can snails learn? Yeah, they can, they can learn. And we uh, have a sort of training paradigm which is very similar to the, the Pavlov's dog sort of phenomenon um, where we can get snails to associate something they don't usually feed with with something they do so that we, when we come along and present that, that, that stimulus that they start to feed. So what happens to snails' memory as they age? They struggle to learn things and they forget things quicker. We can relate that to some of the, the functions of, of the nerve cells that you mentioned earlier on. And if we look at their electrical properties, as snails age their, their electrical properties change and we know that the two particular cells that are involved in learning and memory and these, the properties of these cells change. So we're trying to correlate the, the two things together and we're getting some interesting findings. The cells become less excitable. Um, and we possibly think that might be due to a buildup of calcium, perhaps, which is similar to other organisms uh, as, as they age. 
We've yeah. just described two projects then that have looked at how changes in serotonin signaling in the snail nervous system alter with age, and we wondered whether serotonin signaling was important in the gastrointestinal tract. And a colleague of mine, Bavik Patel, is working on this project. So what are you doing, Bavik? So basically, we're looking at age-related changes in the gastrointestinal tract with a particular interest towards faecal incontinence because that is known to be impaired when you get older. Now, this work is part of a much bigger project supported by the BBSRC, which is in collaboration with partners Dr. Safri at the Open University and Dr. Ranson at Northumbria University. Now, our particular aspect of the project is to look at how such changes occur with different technologies. So one of the technologies we're using is sensor-based devices to measure real-time release of serotonin. Initially, we've already conducted some preliminary measurements to show that there have been age-related changes in the serotonin signaling in the gastrointestinal tract, which leads us to believe that this could give us some indications on faecal incontinence in the elderly. Based on our, our snail work on serotonin, we wondered whether serotonin signaling in the human brain was altered with increasing age and as a consequence whether some antidepressants that target the serotonin system might be less efficacious in, in older people or there may be an increased incidence of side effects. And we've been fortunate to receive funding from the NHS, the Research for Patient Benefit Programme, to study this. And my colleague Relton Scott, clinical pharmacist, is involved in this project. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at uh, a cohort of older patients, 80 years plus, who have been admitted to hospital. And these patients are going to be prescribed antidepressants. And what we're going to do is we're going to assess their serotonergic system. We're then going to see if we can identify a subgroup of patients within the overall group who actually suffer more side effects than benefit in terms of efficacy from the antidepressants. So what would we do if we identified a group of patients that were going to respond badly to, to antidepressants? This would very much help us to target what agents and what methods of treating depression we used in this subgroup of patients. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. So we're really excited about this clinical trial we're doing on antidepressants because we believe that we can identify a population of older people that don't respond well or may be predisposed to adverse drug reactions and fast track them to alternative therapies. So in summary then, we've identified a number of changes in, in serotonergic signaling that occur in the snail with increasing age and these affect feeding behaviour and they affect um, uh, the ability of the animal to learn and remember. We're trying to transfer those changes into an examination of, of faecal incontinence in the, in the gastrointestinal tract and we're really excited about a, a clinical trial that we're, we're carrying out that will hopefully identify a group of patients that do not respond or, or will suffer adverse drug reactions to antidepressants so that we can fast track them to, to, to other treatments. And ageing is going to be a massive problem. I mean, a child born today is going to live to the age of 100, certainly average lifespan. And, and we hope that our work, we're really excited about our work, and we hope that it will contribute to, to, to healthy ageing and, and potentially to delay the onset of age-related diseases.